everyone, this is Marie Blue Angel here, back with another episode, slash part, of Obscura, chapter one, The Descent. Um, it's been a couple days for me since I've been able to play, so I'm very excited to get back into this. Um, I think I'm over here. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have been well. Um, IRL stuff has been a lot, but I finally finished all my IRL stuff that are pressing and have deadlines, so I'm treating myself by playing this game. Um, I think last time, I know we're on Kier's route, um, and I know that the main character has kind of been pulled into this. I'm assuming a ring of people who commit crimes but they get paid and I don't know exactly how everyone has gotten together if they were also similarly um, pulled like Marie, the main character rather, um, has been. Um, but it'll be interesting to see uh, more of that backstory if it comes along. Um, also, when is going? When is the next job going to be? Because you know, the main character, we have to, we have to start working if we want to get enough slash earn enough to get the lunar ichor, uh, or some lunar ichor. So we'll see. Let's just jump into it. In the days that follow, I get used to the pace of life in Mouse Hole. I am, as promised, left to my own devices for the most part. I can sense people getting tense when I drift towards any of the myriad exits, but I'm not about to test my luck with an ill-considered escape attempt. That's true. Oh yes. <laughs> people are on guard, it seems, when you potentially could be leaving without a chaperone. Kier, it seems, is a popular one. He's constantly being called this way or that, attending to roof repairs or settling quarrels. But this is only when I see him, which is quite rare. Oh, okay, so you barely see Kier. Just running around everywhere, probably. We are, quite often, ships that pass in the night. In my first days, I was largely ignored. None of the regular residents wanted to interact with me. Also, scratch that about the criminal ring of criminal people, of, cr of, of criminals, sorry. Um, I'm just assuming we're, like, in a poor neighborhood, and obviously these people, these residents, are just doing what they can to get by. Um, I'm also curious, like, how do people end up in the underground? Like, it makes sense to me that you would go to the underground for something that is of, you know, a short-term, relatively short-term goal. For some, like the main character, Lunar Icker is going to take a while to get, but overall, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a short-term goal. Is there ever a case, or are there cases, just seemingly by like the residents that are um, in the underground, do you end up having a short-term goal, and then it turns into a long-term stay because you're either unable to do it, or you get what you want or maybe and then maybe you have already established a sense of home or feeling or whatever and is it better than outside of the cavern um I'd be curious to know more about that in particular um I'm sure some people in the cavern who have stayed longer than they intended um it's due to circumstance like financially not be able to go back um, and support themselves outside of the cavern and above ground. I'm not really sure. Um, there's a lack right now, from what I understand, a lack of detail about what, um, the life, what life outside of the cavern slash the underground is. So I'm going to keep out an, an eye out for details like that because I'm very curious. I have to admit, it nearly drove me mad. But once I proved to their satisfaction that I was that I am not a deranged maniac, the people seemed keen to get an additional set of hands in their work. 
That's good. I've chopped vegetables and hauled water and watched babies and held a lot of ladders in place. It's not hard work, but it conquers my boredom and gives me a chance to make small talk. Blue! I need a hand. On it. Shale, one of the friendliest people on Mouse Hole, is stacking crates near an exit passage. Not sure how much I can help. I don't think my reach is longer than yours. I just need a little more support so I can help. They do a short hop and shove the crate into place. If you got time, I could use a hand a little longer. My schedule is packed, but I can skip a social engagement or two to help. <laughs> oh, Blue. Ever sarcastic. Shale's chuckle is gratifying. Very funny, but aren't you going to the strategy meeting soon? Strategy meeting? You're running lookout, aren't you? I believe that was the arrangement, but this is the first I'm hearing about a... Kira, you can't just come in and just say things last minute, but I guess you can. Hey, Blue, we gotta talk strats. Speak of the devil. Looks like I'm doing this on my own. I wouldn't want you to skip that social engagement. Thank you, Shale. Maybe there will be some barrels we can roll around later to make up for this. I think there's an empty one around here somewhere. The kids took, took it to roll each other in. That I would love to see. Are you ignoring me, Blue? Not in the slightest. You know how much I love talking with you. Bye, Shale. Bye. I make my way towards Kier. I'm a little more comfortable following him, him through the narrow, winding paths of Mousehole now. Hi, Kier. What were you doing there? Trying to give Shale a hand. Makes sense. Shale's always finding good tasks to get the kids involved in community work. You're probably right, but I resent that remark. Anyway, get moving. Everyone's waiting on you. Well, I wasn't told about this meeting until, like, literally a minute ago. Exactly, Blue. You say that like I'm deliberately, deliberately dallied. <laughs> I deliberately dallied. This is the first time I'm hearing about a meeting. Then we'll need to fix your communication, too. Hey, waiting for me to ask... When are you holding a secret meeting I do not even know is a possibility is not reasonable. Yeah, yeah, get moving. We duck into one of the buildings on the square. Kira has to duck particularly low. The door frame is unusually short, and he is a fairly tall man. Yes, I saw that ducking. I wouldn't have to duck. I'm a short person. Relatively speaking. Um. Hey, Kira. Finally found her? I wasn't hiding. Found her just fine. Thanks. I wasn't hiding. I take a seat at a table with several other individuals. The room is extremely dark, even for an underground room, but I think I can see hints of this being a pub or bar of some kind. Real quick, real quick, Blue. These are Lave and Hollow. You already know Griff. Oh yes, Griff is on the left side. Um, I'm assuming Lave is the one right next to you, and then Hollow is the one all the way to the right. Terrible seeing you again, Blue. Likewise. One of the other two gives me a slow, casual wave. I already forgot the voice I did. Lavernia, call me Lave. My girl here is Halo. The other one, Halo, gives me a near imperceptible nod. She's leaned in close to Lave. Not the talkative sort of couple, then. Okay, Griff, what's the brief? We've got a commission. Fuck off. Here's already approved it. Don't worry. It's fine, Lave. Griff gave me the full rundown of the client. We've got a commission to relieve the auctioneer of a few choice pieces. Oops. A 
Uh, I think Lei was saying something about not the auction. Not, not the auction. I'm not crazy. The auctioneer. That means crossing the ruby walls. The what? You've done that half a dozen times. And nearly died each time. We're not dead yet. Not you too, Kier. You're supposed to be sensible. I am being sensible. This is a huge potential payoff, and we have an in. Uh, interrupt? I want to know more. Like, what's the in? Who's the in? Okay, stop. What is it? You're talking local business, and I'm new to the marketplace. How new? Not quite a month. We're not working with someone that green. <laughs> How did you... <laughs> Kira knew nothing. Well, also, Kira, we haven't talked. A month? By the lunar god Scars, what the fuck were you doing outside the mountain to be able to keep up with me? I would love to know, but I don't think we're going to get to know. Not your business. Fine. Anyways. Time spent in the marketplace isn't the same as experience in our work, Lave. And if things go wrong, you have no obligation to rescue her. Not reassuring. Not for you, but very much to me. And what is it you don't know, Blue? The ruby walls, for one. There's a wall within a vein of raw rubies in the main cavern. There's a gate that, theoretically, anyone can go through. But in practice, is only for the wealthy and the beautiful. Exactly. The auctioneer is rich. She lives above a pleasure parlor on the other side of the ruby walls. The planning continues, with Griff drawing up a map on the table with a piece of chalk. For all his belly aching, Kier is careful to make sure I understand everything. Yeah, you need to, otherwise I'm not going to do a good job. I wouldn't know anything. I'd feel patronized if it wasn't so helpful. The rest are begrudgingly patient until we finish the brief. The four of them stand up. I follow their lead. My cloak is just barely fine enough to be worn beyond the ruby walls. But the other four take the chance to fancy themselves up. What are you wearing? Like, you were wearing a cave? Did oh wait, did you change? God, back in these awful things. Kier holds up a heavy, rich, embroidered cloak. Imagining, imagining him in it is comical. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at me, Blue. Yeah, I am. Yes. <laughs> and you, Lave. She shrugs. She's right. You look stupid in it. It doesn't match. It really doesn't. I keep telling you, buddy. You're made of iron, not silver. Grip's already in his disguise. Like you're one to talk. You look like a child going through Daddy's closet. Griff's short stature and casual posture leading into Kier is completely at odds with his jeweled hood and satin cape. Knowing what he's like honestly makes it even funnier. You look like you robbed Satine without a, lan a lantern. <laughs> I want to join you. <laughs> what is this? You look like a throw pillow fucked a jewelry box. Oh my god. <laughs> La Alev burst into laughter, mostly a Hala's response, I assume. Blue. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. Blue. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry, now I'm just laughing. Kira reaches over, takes hold of my shoulder, and holds tight as he curls into himself, choking on laughter. Laugh it up. After a second, Griff looks at me. It wasn't that funny. You just surprised them with vulgarity. Kier pops up, a smile in his voice. No, it was a bit funny. You really put it over the top, Halo. Oh no, I... Thanks, Halo. The laughter dies away a little, though the mood has def definitely been lifted. 
I didn't realize that this was a job happening right now. Um, but this makes sense. Things settle down again. I don't know why I put up with you. Here pats his shoulder firmly. Neither do I. There's something more scat. There's some more scattered laughs, but the atmosphere of the room slowly turns more serious. Halo and Lave are checking each other's disguises, ensuring their weapons are not visible to passersby. Kier is checking over his own knife carefully. It's beautiful, and likely quite old, unla unlike the rest of his daily wear. Should I be armed? It's not a good idea, obviously. I am a rank novice, and would be far more likely to be stabbed with my own knife than use it to properly defend myself. Still, I cannot help but fear, feel a twinge of fear. A knife won't make me feel less frightened. But it's hard to convince myself of that fact. The rest of the preparations happen in anticipatory silence. Ready? Then let's move. We walk in a loose group to yet another exit. I have yet to fully count the ways into and out of Mouse Hole, but there must be at least half a dozen. It's another narrow pas passage that leads into the, sh <laughs> the back room of a shop. From there, we can exit through the storefront and step into the busy walkways of the marketplace. Back into the marketplace. Look alive. In any other circumstance, we would be a deeply strange group, a gang of well-dressed strangers walking together, but not talking. But this is hardly the strangest sight in the marketplace. There's a bird masked contortionist performing in a tiny cage, and a pair of dunkard, drunkards biting in just one of the crossroads we walk through. Things are as lively as ever. We pass the church on our way to the most central caverns. Was it only a few days ago I was standing there, looking for some clue to start me on my hunt? As we enter the largest cavern, the heart of the marketplace where I started my journey, we walk close together. All right, you know the drill. Split up. We meet across from the Pearl Choker. Blue, you're with me. Okay, that sounds good. Bye, everyone. Lave and Halo are gone in a second, melted into the crowd. Griff glances back at Kier for a long, for a second, before doing the same. Don't trust me not to run off? Not in the slightest. Plus, you're new to this. I might be able to give you some pointers. How do you know I'm new at this? You're paying a lot of attention to small details, the kind that are easy to ignore when you're used to this work. Fair enough. I've never worked in an organized group, sure. I've never worked with others in a project like this, but you have done this kind of work before. I don't see why not. I thought we were supposed to leave our <clears throat> I <laughs> I thought we were supposed to leave our surface life behind down here. Leave it behind all you like. You are still quite comfortable working with us. Well, you have to survive somehow, right? And I doubt the auctioneer is someone who will suffer greatly when we're done with her. No, you won't have to feel bad for her when we're done. She's someone who would sell literally anything if it means getting a cut. And what will we do with our finds? Sell it to a different asshole, who would do anything for a cut. I think you'll like him. I'll think you'll like him, though. He's got a tongue as quick as yours. Is that all you think I am? Maybe if you talked less, I'd understand you more. <laughs> Not a chance. Worth a try. And here are the walls. Take them in. My first impression is that they're nothing special. Stone walls about twice as tall as the average person. Smooth enough to be nearly impossible to climb barehanded. And then I notice the flickering lights. 
The rubies in the stone have been dug around and polished, where they sit so they catch the light. They glimmer like candles, but the color is richer and redder than any fire. There are hundreds, possibly thousands of them. It's subtle and beautiful. And here's our gate. Brace yourself. Here seems to set his shoulders and marches forward, leaving me to hurry and catch up to him. Beyond the ruby walls are still busy, and it's not as though there's anything to muffle the sounds of the rest of the marketplace. But there is, a, there is still a noticeable change. The rest of the marketplace has people hawking their wares, shouting at potential buyers, and cajoling them to buy. Here, the people stand in front of the businesses don't shout. They offer samples or display their wares, pose at and flirt with passers-by, but there is no shouting. I suppose if you have business here, you don't need attention. You don't need to shout to get attention. It really is different. There's nothing in the world like the jewel box. It might have been said in admiration, except Kier's voice is oozing bitter disdain. I want to see, wait. There's nothing in the world like the jewel box. Kier and I walk side by side, taking a few turns to avoid a direct path to the pearl choker. He stops to look at perfume bottles and little ivory statuettes. I pause, near a window blazing with light. A lantern shop. You know the plan. I know the plan. You know where to hide. I know where to hide if you foul up everything. But you won't, will you? From your lips to the moon. Don't make... <laughs> Sorry, I was confused by the lip from your lips to the moon. I thought he was going to elaborate slash blue would ask a question about that, but I have no idea. Um, <clears throat> don't make me run again. Or what? Or I'll be very cross. Be still, my beating heart. Anything but that. <laughs> I love the, I love the sprite where he's just, where Kira's just like, like, hands off me like, so... <laughs> So funny. Um, wish him well? Sure, I'm just gonna wish him well. You'll stay safe, won't you? I have no plans on dying. What about not dreading eternal rest? I'm not afraid of dying. I still don't want to. With my luck, I'd get done in, and it'd hurt like a bitch. Then you'll stay safe. Here stops and turns to me. We're stones in the river of people around us, who pay us no mind. Kier reaches out and then gives me one, two soft pats on the top of my head. You've gotten closer, sir. I'll, s I'll stay safe. You haven't seen the half of what I can do. Oh, cute little head pats. His voice is warm and confident. Bye. At the pearl choker, Kier splits away from me to enter through the front door. I slip between the pleasure parlor and the neighboring gambling hall. Both businesses are high class, with beautiful fronts and charming staff, and I swear I can hear a live band from one of them. But it doesn't matter how pretty the buildings are. All alleyways are the same. There's a, there's a vague sense of grime and hostility. I'm definitely not breaking any rules, but I'm also certainly not welcome here. If things have gone to plan, Lave and Halo broke into the apartment above the Pearl Choker by climbing the new attachment to the gambling house and jumping the gap. Griff and Gear and Kier are going up through the inside using a staff passage, and I'm keeping watch signaling whether the alleyway is clear or not through a simple set of gestures. Holding one arm, there are people in the alley. Holding both, there are guards or staff in the alley. Arms relaxed, no one but me here. 
It is not complicated. But I do have to keep an N, an I, on both ends of the alley and signal consistently. Ideally, all four of them will jump the gap and climb down the gambling hall's addition and will separate to reunite in Mouse Hole. If we need to run, I even have the turns I'll need to take in the crossroads memorized. Straight through the first crossroad, left, then left again, right, and if I won't be seen, I go into and hide into the, in the butcher's shop. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you wanted me to remember that? Um, um, okay, wait, wait, go back. I need to go back. Okay. If we need to run, if we need to run, I need to write this down. Because I won't remember. And I know it says I can do hints and I probably will turn them on. But, okay, if we need to run, I even have the turns I'll need to take into the crossroads memorized. Straight, oh, straight through the first a uh, street first crossroad i'm like writing on my hand left left right and if i'm not seen eyeball with go into butcher shop butcher shop i just my arm we're gonna have to, okay straight on the first crossroad left left right and if I'm not seen, butcher shop. Okay. I have my cheat code. Okay. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to save and see if I can do this without hints. Okay. Okay. And if there are people, okay. At least I, ha I I'm just trying to, okay. I was trying to remember, make sure. At least I have a plan. I lean against the gambling hall wall. This one is made of stone, beautifully cut and polished and scratched with all sorts of graffiti. People never change. Always marking that someone had been here, that had been here, here, that Agatha has great tits, that Darwin fucked his mate. Delightful. I'm alone in the alley. I drop my arms and wait. I feel a cool neutrality. I think I'm fine. I don't enjoy this life, but I'm not upset to be here. Would I choose to be here of my own accord? Probably not. But to get, but to get Lunar Icker, I'd do anything. At least this is something I can tolerate. But for the moment, I had to put those feelings away. For a short while longer, I am completely alone. Then a stranger wobbles along into the alleyway towards me. Hey. Hey. Mind if I smoke? Not at all. Want any? She holds out a little pouch of herbs. I recognize it on sight. Sweetgrass. I've had it plenty of times before. Back on the surface. You smoke it with others to build bonds. As loose herbs like this. It softens the hard edge, edges of stress. Not enough to addle, addle the mind in any way, just enough to make connection easier. Uh, I'm supposed to hold one arm. I let my arm rest against my torso and grip my elbow firmly. Sweet grass, right? You know it? Every teen learns to grow it where I'm from. Lucky you. I only found the stuff down here. Uh, I feel like I should be focused, uh, but no. But like, then why am I in the alleyway? Like, no? It's a kind offer, but I have to say no. Fair enough, more for me. She rolls her tab with quick, clever fingers. Even if she's new to the practice, she's clearly gotten good at it. She strikes the match. I can smell the faint sweetness of the smoke. I keep turning my gaze to either end of the alley, still focused on my mission. What are you here for? Buying. What you buying? Nothing as of yet. And you? Heard there was a fortune one in the gambling hall halls here every hour. Thought I tried my luck. And how is your luck fared? I'm about to get a big win. 
I can feel it. Not well, then. May the lunar gods smile on you. Oh, you're a loony? There's a few people milling near the alleyway entrance. I can't tell what sort of people they are. Well, most people here are. A lunar blessing felt appropriate. It's so strange, though. The solar god makes everything perfect. The lunar god ruins everything. And then the people here worship the moon? I was never one for, the the for theology myself. Whatever. Oh. One of the people at the end of the alleyway starts coming in. Big, confident posture. At first, I can't tell if they're armed. Then, I see the blade. Um, I mean staff or any staff? Yes? It could be some- like, couldn't it be a staff person? They get closer. Hello. Any reason you're loitering back here? Oh, I didn't realize we were loitering. We were just having a break. Yeah, we are. We were sharing some sweet grass. Want any? She rummages through her bag, but the stranger cuts her off. No. They point at me. I didn't see you in the hall earlier. I wasn't in the gambling hall. Then where have you been? Here. Proof? Well, I've been here with her for a while now. Mind if I ask a few questions? Go ahead. Definitely some kind of security force. Did you come... Um, <laughs> did you come here alone? Come where? This alley? To the jewel box. Uh, I came here alone. But does it <laughs> I need to save. Save once again. Because I probably should say that I came here with a friend. Oh, no. I came with a friend, but he wanted to do certain things. And I didn't feel like joining him. You know how it is. Their posture betrays nothing. Then I see my new friend here with seagrass, and she offered to share some. That's what happened? Yeah. Put that out and go back in. I'm not done yet. I'm talking to this one, alone. It doesn't sound like they're going to brook any argument. You have a win, in, a win waiting for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Good talking with you. Likewise. She leaves, and I'm left alone with this member of, secu of a security force. Well, it's the staff. I mean, him. Is there a problem then? Routine check. Do people not stand around alleyways in the jewel box? Not unless they're looking for trouble. I was just looking for a little bit of quiet. With another person? Better one than hundreds, I would say. The stranger doesn't look amused. Why are you here? In the jewel box or in general? The marketplace. Oh, the marketplace. Buying. And you had time to wander around? Turns out not everything is for sale all of the time. I'm waiting for a shipment to come in. That should be enough truth to convince them. And what have you been doing while you wait? Minding my 
my business? <laughs> I'm not good at these. Seeing everything the marketplace has to offer. Oh, I've been everywhere, even if I'm not buying. It's incredible to see everything there is to offer. The staff at the Leaping Bear have been very good at advising me where to go. No answer, but that's better than a bad one. Open up your cloak. What? I need to check your check you for dangerous objects. I mean, I guess. Good thing I didn't take a knife. I open my cloak and put up the security officer examining with almost intimate closeness by lantern line. It's uncomfortable, but there's only so much I can do. I did consent to this, technically. As you can see, I am just an ordinary traveler. I agree that you're not carrying any weapons. You're free to go. Sorry? You can leave now. My first instinct is to tell them that I want to stay here. But that's not going to go over well. I'm waiting for someone here. Then wait in the tea parlor across the road. Clear out. I'd rather not. They stare at me. I suppose that they're trying to parse exactly what I'm thinking. You've been cooperative, so I'm going to extend the same courtesy to you. Once. Get out of here before I have to take you in for suspicious behavior. I freeze. I can't leave, but staying is also no longer an option. I'm almost grateful that this is the moment someone chooses to leap in the balcony above and land on the addition to the gambling house. It's Kier. He lands and before the security officer can say a word, a knife flies past my head and stops in the officer's gut. Oh my gosh. Sorry, the music just came back. They fall, gasping. We're compromised. Run! I don't even stop to think. I just move. No one's raised an alarm yet as I sprint from the alley. But me sprinting away from the gambling hall at full tilt is inherently suspicious. Other security officers start pursuing me. I reach my first crossroad within seconds. I run straight through. <laughs> I sprint straight through the crossroad plowing through a cluster of people, listening to a mus musician on a corner. I could swear my pursuers are getting closer. Another crossroad. Turn left. I can feel the ache of exertion settling into my muscles, but I'm not close to safe yet. I'm not slowing, but the security officers chasing me seem to be getting faster. I nearly collide with some rander random passerby. Turn left again. My legs and lungs are burning. This is even worse than when Kier abducted me. Then I could just follow him. Stop her! The general apathy of the crowd around me means no one will help me. But no one seems keen to help security, either. Did I do left left already? Bless the moon. Even so, one of my pursuers is getting dangerously close. Gotta shake them. I spot someone selling an assortment of chairs, with several tall stacks within reach. I can't help the words that come out of my mouth. Sorry about this. I grab a stack and pull it down as I pass. Then, another. There's a fearsome racket of wood on the stone, the surprise shouts of people passing by, and as quick, a quick glance back shows none of the security and a quick glance back shows none of the security guards as close to me anymore. Almost there. You have to turn right. I know what I'm looking for. And thankfully, the security is just far back enough. They won't see me. Hide with the butcher. Hi, butcher. I practically tear the door open. I need sanctuary. The front room is thankfully empty, and the butcher is quick to jump to action, letting me into the back. The room is chilled with blocks of ice, and there's a faint smell of blood. At least there's a roof to keep the cold in. I have to fight to keep from panting. 
the cold air harsh against my throat. I feel lightheaded from suddenly stopping. All my blood is in my legs, or that's how it feels. You're hiding here. The shopkeeper opens a wooden chest, empty, and pulls out the bottom panel. There's a deep hole under the false bottom, a natural gap in the mountain stone. It'll be cramped, but I am in no position to complain. Thanks. I was so scared. I mean, there weren't any of my hints, and the time was going, but I did write this on my arm. Um, so, I kind of like that. That was very interactive. I climb in, and the butcher puts the false bottom back in the box over me. I hear him pile a few things into the chest and then close the lid. Someone is pounding on the stone counter in the front room. The butcher, the butcher must go back into the front room because I can hear voices, or must go back into the front room because I can hear voices, but not the words being said. I close my eyes and strain my ears. I can hear my pulse, but also people coming into the back. Footsteps. Words are still difficult to make out. I cover my mouth under my mask and try to breathe silently. Please. Please. There is a loud bang and I inhale so sharply I almost choke. Someone's kicked the chest I'm hiding under. Not enough to disturb the false bottom, thankfully. But still. The lid is opened. I don't move. I don't breathe. I keep my eyes closed tight and my mouth covered. Please. The lid is closed. The footsteps get further away. In the darkness, I pull away my mask just enough to run my hands down my face. It's back on when the butcher comes back to get me. You staying here? For an hour or two, if that's all right with you. Don't touch the goods and you can stay. Thank you. A few hours in the cold, alone with my thoughts, is not fun. But it's a relief compared to the escape I just endured. When I feel like the coast is clear, I leave the butcher and make my way to the safer side of the roofy walls. I have to meet here and the rest now. When we reunite, it's in the run-down pub in Mouse Hole. Hey, Blue, what took you so long? I was hiding in the butcher's shop, waiting for things to cool down. Why were you? Here, did you lie to me? <laughs> was I a decoy? <gasps> I mean, I guess it's fine if that's part of the job, but like, that would have been nice to know. Good job hiding, Blue. We only just got here ourselves. Such a liar. I realize exactly what's going on a second later. Kier, you shithead. Fine, take it out on me now. Did my running around as a distraction actually do anything? It was a guarantee. But we were already done with the hardest part of the job. You were duped. Oh, you were, <laughs> you were duped. Kier, I can't find Griffith's voice. Oh my gosh. You were duped. Kier wanted to be absolutely sure we'd, we'd be safe and use you to do it. And risk my life in the process. If anything went wrong, I would have been killed. You would have. Thanks. Cool acknowledgement. His cool acknowledgement only serves to heat up my temper. And you didn't hesitate for a second. To send me on an especially dangerous, unnecessary job just because I'm your least favored? If you're not making a list of which of us gets thrown off a cliff first, you're not thinking far enough ahead. Here, here. Anything else I should know about them? Are you going to feed me things to check for poison or sell me to get intel? Fuck off. You're the one who decided I'm disposable. I just want to know how much. I knew you weren't going to get... I knew you weren't going to get... 
I knew you weren't going to get killed. You don't need me to tell you that you're, you're quick thinking and fast on your feet. I could rely on you to be a distraction and let the rest of us get out safely. But you couldn't let me know what I was doing, and that is where the problem lies. It's not a problem. To, it's, le it's less of a problem of doing this dangerous job. The second part. But it's more of a problem that you did not communicate this. Here. I'm also mad. Oh, no, that is an excuse. No, I couldn't trust you to do it if you knew what I was asking. Maybe I just won't do anything you tell me to do, then, unless I understand why. I cross my arms. Kier can't see me seething, so I settle for communicating it in posture instead. Drinks on us, whoever this is. The one of the, the, one of the servers, a barmaid with pretty hands and a full flat moon mask, delivers drinks to our table. Thanks, babe. Don't make me regret this, Griffy baby. Griff will be on his Griff will be on his best behavior now, right? Yes, he will. He almost sounds like a chasten child. Kier lifts his drink. To a successful run. To a successful run. The others race their tankards. I would want to drink after that, bro. To hell with it. Might as well get drunk. I toast with the rest of the thieves. The glass clinks and we all drink. Well, show us the loot. I think we've earned a look at our prize, right? Yeah. Halo and Lave go through their pockets and drop some small things on the table. God scars, that's the stuff. Griff turns to the server. We've got a couple... A couple of good necklaces. Nothing wild, but we're not going to turn our noses up on that, right? Some compass stones, a few rare coins that I know will go to a good home. And the bit we got commissioned for. A genuine witch ring. A witch ring? You're serious. As the grave. Well, that sounds very impressive. Maybe even worth putting our lives at risk for? Witch rings give power to the wearer. The longer you wear, the more power you get. It's just about the only magical thing that won't ruin your life. Well, it won't ruin your life directly. But there's a lot of fighting over them. Yep. And that means people willing to pay a lot to get their hands on one. What a treasure. You're telling me, Dee. Halo puts away the spoils of our adventure. And when good old Hemlock, or Absinthe, or whatever he's calling himself these days shows up, payday. You're going to be rich, Blue. I can hear him smirking. The drinking goes on for hours. I hear a lot of songs and more than a few stories about other gigs they've done. Halo eventually brings out a deck of cards. She also wipes the floor with us. For someone as shy as she is, Halo's a regular card shark. I love that for Halo. Then, Lave yawns, and she and Halo go home to rest. Griff follows the server, who I know, now know is called Delight, into the back. Let's head home, Blue. I feel exhaustion seeping into my bones. Let's. Kira and I stumble into each other as we walk. I can't find it in me to be bothered when he bumps into me. You're both drunk, I'll probably. The boost sloshing around in me loosens my lips, and words start spilling out of me. <laughs> You're a real bag of dicks, you know that? Tell me something I don't know. Just a terrible piece of work. An absolute wreck of a person. I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. I wouldn't trust me, and I can throw myself pretty far. <laughs> he rethinks his choice to show me how far he can throw himself just in time. <laughs> Anyways, why am I a bag of dicks this time? I 
could stand to be in a lot less danger. You think I don't feel bad about this whole thing? You think I don't feel bad about this whole thing? Or do you feel bad? I doubt it. If I could snap my fingers and tomorrow no one would get murdered. If the beautiful people found Mouse Hole, I'd do that instead of making you work for us. But I don't have magic snappy fingers. That's true. Kira doesn't. Not even mouse, even sure mouse hole in, is the first thing I'd save with the magic snappy fingers. No? There are people getting sold in every auction. And that's just the legit stuff. The marketplace is hell blue, and a lot of people never know it. Then why, why are you stealing people? Griff said that, that you steal people sometimes. You time and write, you can steal a person who's been bought and let them free. Their family gets the money, and they don't get tortured to death. See, I thought that Kier was doing something good. That this was all, like, him and his little group are doing something good. They're not just people stealing people to sell them. I knew there was a good reason. Kier stops and stares at me. You honestly think we've got it in us to buy and sell people like they're shit? When we're all just the shit off the streets already? Bag of dicks. Human trash pile. Hideously, hideously awful, but compellingly handsome. That's all fine. I can limp with that. <laughs> Not him throwing compellingly handsome, though I can't disagree. But sacrificing a life for my own happiness? Fucking never. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. And what about you? I'm not keen on being a bag of dicks, but it's better than being a monster. No, not that. The magic snappy fingers. What would you save? Myself? I don't know. I guess myself. Makes sense. The Lunar Icker is for you, right? Yeah. Why? What is it for? Uh. Oh. Why not? It's called Fractum Anima. It's an extremely rare illness. Deadly? Eventually, it's not a quick killer, and it does a lot of other nasty stuff. Not really a fun post-job chat topic, though. I'm sorry. It's not your fault I'm sick, right? No, still sorry, all the same. Thanks. It feels good for someone down here to know about it, what I'm going through. The house with the blue shutters is right before us. He puts a hand to the wall of the house and murmurs something softly into the walls. Then Kier unlocks the door and lets me in. Welcome home, Blue. Oh. We're home. He's still standing in the doorway. It's an arresting image. This man who is ruthless and generous in equal measure, welcom welcoming me into his home, both as a kindness and blocking the door because I am a prisoner. <laughs> then he reaches for my face. I refuse to flinch away, and instead of touching my mask as I feared, he drops my hand on my head. Are you just going to pat Blue's head? Aw. Is this going to be a habit of yours? Aw, it's cute. It's cute, though. He pats the top of my head. Once. Twice. Might be. Yeah. I'm not a child. You're not. He doesn't stop. You're sure fun, though. 
Thanks. He huffs out a little laugh. <laughs> Despite everything, you're a good egg. Despite everything? You talk too much. You're sarcastic and mouthy. Point taken. But still, good egg. Oh. He takes his hand away. All right, enough of that sappy stuff. That's so cute. I love that. I'm tired. He closes the door behind him and heads for his room, scooping up a snack. I'm left alone in the room. I'm exhausted, but I do feel a weight coming off my shoulders. For now, it's home. Aww, best end. Welcome home. Uh, <laughs> so cute. This is so much better in the first. Oh my goodness. I love this route so far. Um, <clears throat> I really like here. I, I like it. Um, it's like a nice little development. I like the group. I like that we got to do a job and that there was like some interactive gameplay there with the running away and making some time choices. Um, I'd really be interested to see... Um, um, just how it all continues. Um, obviously this is only chapter one, but I really like Kier's route, and I'm much preferring this over Cirrus's route. Um, I can't even apologize for not, for liking Kier more. It's, it's, it's very clear to me. Uh, I have a preference between the two. Um, and that was really fun. This is also a very long video, which is also evident of how much I like this route and Kier himself and the and the gang like Griff and Hollow and Lave and Delight and everyone. It's very sweet. And it's kind of like home, really home away from home. So that's good. But yes, please let me know what you think of Kier's route in this first chapter of Obscura. Um, between the two of them, Cirrus and Kier. Do you have a preferred route so far? Or are there is there a route from the other two love interests that you're very curious about? Um, I will be playing the other two, of course, um, soon. So I got the best end with this, which actually I'm quite surprised, but it just felt right with some of the choices. Um, I will not be playing this um, on screen, like continue playing Kier's route for chapter one on screen. Um, but I encourage you to check it out yourself if you're able to. Um, but yeah, I will leave it here for today and I will come back with another video soon. Bye!